This is Al Brooks, and today is Friday, November 16th, 2012. Today I'm going to be talking about the 60-minute E-mini chart or the 60-minute spider chart. They're basically the same. The market has been in a bear channel, a broad bear channel, for a while. And over the past couple of days, we've tried to have a bear breakout of a bear channel. In other words, the market tried to break out below the bear channel. And two times out of three, that's going to fail within about five bars. And today was a sign that the uh, bear breakout uh, is failing. This material is based on material in my Brooks Trading course on trading channels. I'm going to begin by showing the five minute spider. Again, it's the same as the E mini. And the purpose of this slide is to show two things. First of all, a very strong bull spike, another strong bull spike, another strong bull spike, another one here. So we're starting to accumulate a lot of bull bodies and consecutive bull bodies, uh, good sized bodies, small tails on top. So the buying pressure has been very, very strong over the past couple of days. Yet, look what happened when the market rallied up here. It could not get above the high. It failed again. It failed again. So the market is continuing to make lower highs. That means that the bears see these strong bull spikes as opportunities to sell. They're selling heavily over here, and they're coming in and overpowering the bulls. So right below the prior high, the bears come in and dominate the bulls and drive it down to a new low. So every time the market gets near a prior high, the bears appear as if out of nowhere, and they sell very heavily with a stop just above the prior high. So their risk is small. Probability is good since we're in a bear trend, and the reward is large to a new low. So it's a great setup for the bears. The same with selling over here. Put a stop above prior highs and uh, sell anywhere up in here, no matter how strong these bull bars are. Your risk is small. Your reward to a new low is great. Probability uh, at least 50% since we're in a bear trend. Yet uh, we're forming these strong bull spikes, and to me this is far too much buying pressure. Um, this is also right below the bottom of a bear channel on the 60-minute chart. I don't have the channel drawn in. These lines are just trend lines to uh, illustrate um, possible major trend reversal setups. I don't have a trend line drawn in here, but this was a higher low major trend reversal attempt. This is a lower low, again from this trend line that is not drawn in, where this low is below that low. A good-looking signal bar, but bad breakout, weak breakout. We br this rally broke above another bear trend, and then we had a lower low major trend reversal here. So we have a bear trend, we have a smaller bear trend here, a bull breakout, and then a lower low major trend reversal. To me, this is not a strong setup to buy right here, um, because the channel down here is um, pretty strong, uh, pretty tight channel, pretty good bear bars. You can buy that for a swing, or you can wait to see what the bull breakout looks like, and then buy. And this bar, I think, was an exceptional bar. Very big bar, very big body. Yes, tail on top, but it went above this high. And to me, the context on the 60-minute chart uh, is such that this could be the bar that I've been waiting for. So traders could buy this bar as it formed. And many traders did on the E-mini, 100,000 contracts were traded. And that tells you that there was very heavy trading. And lots of traders decided that something had changed. So to me, you can buy this bar. You can buy its close. You can put a stop below its low or below this higher low with a high probability of a reward at least equal to your risk. So if you bought that close and your stop is down here, um, probably 60, 70, 80 percent chance that you would get a reward equal to your risk. So if you enter here, stop here, um, you know, a high probability of a measured move up. You can say, well, Al, I don't want to risk that much. That's way too many points. Well, then simply buy a weekly call. You could have bought a weekly call for about 40 cents, and up here it probably was worth 80 cents. So you would have had a very good return on your call. A 40 cent call costs you $40, so the most you can lose is $40. You can also trade a, a stock that is much less expensive. So instead of a $135 spider, just trade Bank of America. 
you know, Bank of America went up about 15 or 20 cents from here to here. And I think uh, on that breakout bar, I think 5 million shares were traded. So it was a very good bar for the, um, for the bulls. During the day, three pushes down and a second leg up. Um, I think we're in the process of correcting for at least a bar, a, a day or two or three. Let me go to the 60 minute chart. Um, and let me first say, look what happened. This, the, what the, the salient feature of this chart is we finally went above prior um, highs. So this is the first significant um, higher high. Yes, it's not a higher high in the new bull trend, right? It's only taking out um, lower highs in the bear trend. But to me, this is a significant show of strength on the part of the bulls. And the bulls want to get above here and maybe get a leg um, two equal to leg one. So we might get a leg one and then a leg two move up. This bull spike is so unusual and so strong, I think more likely we'll get a channel up from here with uh, several legs up. We'll see. You know, I don't know, but I'd, I'd say 60% chance we're going to get good follow through uh, for at least several days. Here's the 60 minute chart. Again, here's a very strong bull move up. And then look here, another strong bull move, move up and it failed right below that high. So an, a lower high. This one failed right below here, another lower high. Here uh, was also a failure and a lower high. And the patterns are getting smaller. So uh, pretty big uh, move up here, smaller here, smaller here. This in fact is another example, um, high, lower high, another lower high. So traders are shorting, for example, here, placing a stop above that and having a target down here. So they have a, re a reward down here, much greater than their risk from here to just above there. And um, so we've got a big double top bear flag here, a smaller one here, a smaller one here, a smaller one here. So the patterns are getting smaller and smaller. And that usually has um, the same properties of a wedge and it often leads to a reversal. We have a trend line on top of the bear channel. This is a reasonable choice for the bottom of the bear channel. There are other possibilities that I could have drawn as well. And the market tried to break above here, tried to break above here, and it looks like it's going to succeed. Actually, there was a, a, another attempt right here that's hard to see. Anyway, we've got a bear breakout of a bear channel. So a bear channel, a channel going down, and the market tried to break out of the bottom. Uh, one chance out of three, it's going to have enough room for a decent trade down. Two chances out of three, it does this. It finds buyers. Uh, who are the buyers? It's, it's bears taking profits at the bottom of a channel, right? Every time it gets down to the bottom of the channel, traders buy. Bears buy back shorts for profits. Bulls start to buy for swings up. And we tried to reverse up here, strong bar. We tried here, a little doji bar. And then today, we had this very big bull bar closing above the channel, followed by four other bars all closing above the bottom of the channel. So to me, two chances out of three, approximately, that we're going to work up to the top of the channel um, near term, you know, over the next week or two or three. Um, next target up, this double top. This is a large low two short, and a low two and a bear trend is often the final flag. So this could end up being the final flag, and the market will try to test uh, the top of this double top. And then the same thing here, the top of this double top, and maybe even the top of this double top. I don't know. Near term, I think, um, probably better than a 50-50 chance the market's going to work up to the top of the channel, maybe a 60% chance. I'd like to see a little bit more follow through before I'm confident. The bears want this to be a wedge bear flag. Here's a push up, second push up, third push up. So the bears are hoping that this is a wedge bear flag in an ongoing bear trend. To me, the reversal up on the five minute was strong enough to make me think the character of the market has changed and we have a reasonable shot, 50 to 60% chance of working up to the top of this uh, bear channel. So we have a bear channel, and we have a breakout of the bottom of a bear channel, so a bear breakout of a bear channel. Two chances out of three, it'll fail within five bars or so. Here it went on for about 10 bars, and it looks like it's starting to fail. Once it reverses into the channel, especially if it reverses strongly into the channel, the chances are uh, probably two out of three, maybe higher than that that it will poke out of the top of the channel. It could keep going up, but the minimum target is at least a poke above the top of the channel, a fraction of a tick. 
there's a saying on Wall Street that Thanksgiving is owned by the bears and Christmas is owned by the bulls. And the implication is the market often sells off going into Thanksgiving and then rallies into Christmas. Um, I don't know if that's true or not, but that is something that some traders pay attention to. To me, this is um, what's uh, really interesting to me. A big double top, a, s a smaller double top, smaller and smaller. So we're getting nested smaller and smaller double tops. So uh, the pattern is getting tighter and tighter and it's functionally a wedge. And um, we're failing in repeated attempts to get the bear breakout. So that tells me that the market will probably try to go in the opposite direction, which is up to test the top of the 60 minute bear channel. And that is all that I have to say today, Friday, November 16th, 2012. Thank you.